Hi, and welcome to the Dominica Bureau of Standards Inspection Unit. Did you know that there are currently eight compulsory national labeling standards being monitored in Dominica? As consumers, do you take the time to read your labels? Are you aware of the requirements which should be placed on these labels? Today, we are here to educate you on the requirements of the standards for pre-packaged goods and pre-packaged foods. General presentation of information. The label shall be steadfast. The statements on the label shall be prominent, clear, indelible, and readily legible by the consumer. The name and net contents of the food shall appear in a prominent position and in the same field of vision. Pre-packaged foods, product name. A pre-packaged food shall indicate the true nature of food and shall be specific and not generic. To avoid misleading or confusing the consumer, the true nature and physical condition of the food shall be declared, for example, dried, concentrated, reconstituted, or smoked list of ingredients except for single ingredient foods a list of ingredients shall be declared on the label the list of ingredients shall be headed or preceded by an appropriate title that consists of or includes the term ingredient all ingredients shall be listed in descending order of proportion net content shall be declared in the metric system liter gram immediately followed by the imperial system in brackets ounce pound gallon a food packed in a liquid medium shall carry a declaration in the metric system in the drained weight of the food example tuna in water name and address and country of origin name and address of the manufacturer packer or distributor shall be declared the country of origin of the food shall be declared example product of dominica the country in which the final processing is performed shall be considered to be the country of origin batch or lot identification code or number it is an identification number assigned to a particular or lot material from a single manufacturer which shall be declared on the label. Each container shall be permanently marked in a code or in clear to identify the producing factor and the lot. Date markings and storage conditions. The date of minimum durability, best before date, shall be declared consists of at least the day and month for minimum durability of not more than three months month and year for a minimum durability of more than three months accompanied by date itself or reference to where the date is given in addition to the date of minimum durability any special conditions for the storage of the food shall be declared on the label language information on the label shall be in the english language for export of goods to bilingual countries all information on every container shall be shown in both official languages only the name and business address of the processor manufacturer packer or distributor shall be shown in one of the official languages Instructions for use. Instructions for use, including reconstitution where applicable, shall be included on the label as necessary to ensure correct utilization of the food. General presentation of information for pre packaged goods. The label shall be steadfast. The statements on the label shall be prominent, clear, indelible, and Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Dominica Bureau of Standards webinar, Key Processes to Unlock Excellence in Manufacturing. First of all, let me welcome those joining us on Facebook, also via DBS Radio, 
and Dominica Bureau of Standards. Thank you for joining us, and I'd like to encourage you to stay till the end because we have uh, some prizes to be won, and the winners will be announced at uh, the end. So for the quiz, we have some rules for the quiz. On our Zoom, you would need to reply to answer to quiz. But before we continue, I am your host, your moderator here, Kamisha Dominic. So our prizes today are sponsored by Smart Supermarket and Body Bliss Spa, as well as Dominic Bureau of Standards. So uh, we will take the questions at the end of every two presentations. But while the, the presentations are going on, you can type your questions in the chat. And we have a chat administrator who will go through the questions and we will ask your questions on screen. So we have a lovely panel of experts here with us this evening on our webinar, Key Processes to Unlock Excellence in Manufacturing. So we'll take a break, and when we come back, we will introduce our panel. Thank you so much for joining us on this webinar. We'll be right back. If you're just joining us right now, you are viewing our live webinar, Dominica Bureau of Standards, Key Processes to Unlock Excellence in Manufacturing. And we have a live panel with us right here. And tonight, we will li would like to introduce to you our panel. First off, we have Ms. Keisha Joseph. Technical Officer for Quality, Dominica Bureau of Standards. And she will be talking to us about the process flow for locally manufactured products. We also have Mr. Danny Joseph. He's the Entrepreneurship, Business, and Innovation Officer at the Ministry of Trade, Commerce, and Business Development. And he will be speaking to funding and resources available for small business. We have Mr. Philip Roll, coordinator, Dominica Youth Business Trust. And he will be giving an overview of DYBT and resources for startup. Mr. Linvor Ambo, managing director, Alozi Business Ventures, manufacturing excellence and unlocked. Ms. Medine Pierluit from ESMAT, 
she'll be speaking to support and compliance. And uh, we have Miss Davina Buston. George, she's, she's the supervisor at Campbell's. And we have Mr. Kess Talabad, supervisor graphic design at Campbell's. So thank, thank you so much for joining us on our webinar this evening. We are happy you have taken the time to join us. We will run right into things with our first presenter, Ms. Keisha Joseph. We will take her bio at this time. So if you're jo just joining us, you are, you are looking at, you are viewing Dominica Bureau of Standards webinar. We have a very exciting webinar for you this evening. We have gifts, we have prizes sponsored by SMAT and also by Body Bliss Spa. And just to remind you, you could type in your questions, your answers to the questions live on our Facebook. That's Dominica Bureau of Standards Facebook page or DBS Facebook page. Or if you are viewing through Zoom, you can just type your answers to answer to questions. So you have to go into Zoom and look for answer to question, answer to quiz question, and type your answer to the quiz, to that um, contact, and the first person who answers will win. Again, we will take your questions all throughout, but, but you must type in your questions in the chat. The questions will be taken all throughout the webinar, and we will attempt to answer your questions after every two presentations. All right, so let's take the bio of Ms. Keisha Joseph. Okay, so Ms. Keisha, Keisha Joseph is a technical officer for quality at the inspection unit of the Dominica Bureau of Standards. She heads the inspection unit and leads a team responsible for standards, compliance, inspections, dom gap farm inspections, and farm produce export inspections. In her field of work, she works with a wide range of stakeholders, namely local manufacturers, agro-processors, importers, exporters, and farmers. Her main aim is to ensure that quality and quantity coexist. She holds a BS in Economics and Management Honors from the University of the West Indies, Cavill Campus, and an MBA in Business Administration with specialization in finance and in, in, in finance from King's Graduate School, Monroe College. Please welcome Ms. Keisha Joseph as she gives her presentation. All right, so thank you for joining us. If you are just joining in, you are viewing Dominica Bureau of Standards webinar, Key Processes to Unlock Excellence in Manufacturing. And we have a panel of experts here this evening to take you through the process, all the important processes that you need to go through to get through to manufacturing excellence. And we have Ms. Keisha Joseph, Mr. Danny Joseph, Mr. Philip Roll, Mr. Lindvor Ambo, Mrs. Medine Pierlui, Mrs. Davina Boston George, and Mr. Kester Labad. And right now we will go to Miss.
So as a potential manufacturer or agro-processor, you are thinking of wanting to do a product. So there are a few steps that you can take to ensure that you have a compliant local product on the shelves in the supermarket. So at the inspection unit, we develop a process flow chart for locally manufactured products, which features eight steps. So this idea was actually initiated by our previous PS, uh, Mrs. Esther Thomas. So there are eight steps if you're looking to have a compliant label local product on the market. One, develop a product, a product sample, a product idea. Two, where you go through the Bureau of Standards and the Printing and Designing Companies to get the labeling requirements and costing of services as it relates to printing and designing of labels and the services of the Bureau of Standards. Three, financial assistance from the government or private agencies and financial institutions. Four, where you go to the designing and printing companies in terms of design of labels for evaluation and registration. Five, where you go to the Bureau of Standards for different services from the Bureau of Standards. Six, where you have the design and printing companies where they'll come in to do the printing of the labels for production. And seven, other assistance required from government agencies and private agencies. And finally, we have eight, where the products will be on sale at the supermarket or being export. So we're going to take a look at each of the eight steps. So step one, the potential manufacturer will develop a product sample, a product idea. So during the past years, we have seen an increase in the amount of ideas that we have seen by local manufacturers on island. So the, the potential manufacturer will develop a product sample or product idea. Step two, that is where you will come to the Bureau of Standards to get your labor requirements from the inspection unit and also the costing and also the costing of the services from the design company and printing company as well as the Bureau of Standards. So that step you'll come to the Bureau of Standards to get your label your label information and also you'll get the costing of the services from the Bureau of Standards and the printing and design company as it relates to the labels. So for step three, we'll have the financial assistance from the government and private agencies and financial institutions. So at that step, you will go to either the government agency or the private agency to all financial institutions to, find, to get your funding for the different costings that you receive from the printing and design companies as well as Bureau of Standards. So at step four, that is where you go to design your labels. So we have have this done by designing and printing companies. So previously, we have trained 19 designing, and graph designing companies and graphic designers. And also, we had a private training as well for the, the staff of Campbell's business system. So you can go to these, finance, um, these printing companies and you design your label. For step five, the Bureau of Standards Units and its services. So at the Bureau, we have various units that are responsible for different aspects in terms of the manufacturing and product development. So we'll just take a look at some of the units and what the activities they have towards the manufacturing sector. So first we have the standards development unit. So the role of this unit is to develop and adopt standards. So we have three types of standards. We have international standards, regional standards, and national standards. So currently we have 10 national compulsory standards where eight of them are labeling, one for lead in paint and one for hygiene. Currently we also have seven technical committees in the areas of construction, food, consumer goods, security and resilience, agriculture, tourism and electricals. So as it relates to the manufacturing sector, the unit has two activities where they develop and adopt standards. As I previously mentioned, we have eight labeling standards where the most common use type of standards we have is for prepackaged foods and prepackaged goods as related to local manufacturers. Also, this unit is responsible for training good manufacturing practices, GMP. Then we have the inspection unit. So at the inspection unit, we have three subunits. We have a subunit which is responsible for some gap farm inspections where they work with the farmers, also the 
conduct training for they host training for farmers in the areas of food safety, first aid, and pesticide management. We have fresh produce inspections, which is conducted in Portsmouth, as well as standards compliance, where they monitor product labels through either RCQ, port inspections, market surveillance, and label evaluation. As it relates to the manufacturing sector, this unit is responsible for label evaluation and registration, where the manufacturer bring in the label for evaluation and registration where they will give them a certificate that states that the label is compliant, which they can use as a marketing tool. Also, this unit is responsible for backward generation, as well as training on labeling standards requirements. So they have done training in design and printing companies, supermarket representatives, local manufacturers, as well as financial companies and government supporting agencies. Also, we have the National Center for Testing Excellence. So this is made up of two labs. We have the chemistry lab and the microbiology lab. So the areas of expertise, they have, some of them are cosmetics, agriculture, food and beverages, water, environment, and material, material conformance, and forensic. So at the um, microbiology lab and the chemistry lab, there are a wide range of testing that they do for local manufacturers. So you have, for example, your net content, your shelf life, your alcohol content and so on. So there are a wide range of testing done for local manufacturers by the both chemistry and microbiology lab. Then we have the metrology unit. So this unit is responsible for verification of fuel pumps and weighing devices. And in the future, they're looking to go into verification of flow meters and flow meters. So as it relates to the local manufacturers and the manufacturing sector, this unit is responsible for verification of skills and measuring devices. So, for example, if as a manufacturer you have your product and it's stating you at the end of the day when you add it up, you're really and truly losing out. So, to ensure that you have the right measurements, the metrology unit is responsible for verification of skills and measuring devices for the local manufacturers. And lastly, we have the certification unit which is responsible for various certification schemes, such as the biodegradable scheme, the dumb gap, the dumb gap farm certification scheme, the good manufacturing practices scheme, and so on. So as it relates to manu the manufacturing sector, they have the good manufacturing practices scheme, which recently, as you, you know, we um, certified the DCP successors in GMP. And also, they're working with different manufacturers to get them GMP certified. Also, they issue a certificate of free sale, which can be used for export by the local manufacturers. So now for step six, you have the printing of the labels for production. So at that step, that is when the designing and printing companies come in again, where they will print the labels for production. So for step seven, we have any other assistance required by government, required, so this is done by government and private agencies. So in terms of the government agencies, we have a group of us where we meet every quarter, where we share ideas and where we can collaborate on in terms of assisting local manufacturers. And the last step, step eight, where we have products on sale in supermarket and for export. So at that, at that stage is defining a stage. So to have a compliant label on the shelf of the supermarkets, there are eight steps that you will take, which will give you a competitive edge in terms of the other products on the, on the shelves in the supermarket in terms of having compliant labels. So this is the end of my presentation in terms of the process flowchart for locally manufactured products as it relates to compliant labels. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Joseph, for a great presentation. If you are just logging in, or if you are looking on Facebook, you are viewing our live webinar, Key Processes to Unlock Excellence in Manufacturing. And you just heard from uh, Ms. Keisha Joseph, and uh, she spoke about the process flow for locally manufactured products. So we're moving right along to Mr. Danny Joseph of uh, the Ministry of Trade.
and we will take his introductory bio. Okay, Mr. Dan Joseph is the Entrepreneurship, Business and Innovation Officer at the Ministry of Trade, Commerce, Entrepreneurship, Innovation, Business and Export Development. And he'll be, he will be presenting this evening on funding and resources available for small business. Good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here, as stated as by our host. I'm Danny Joseph with the Ministry of Trade and Commerce. I will um, present to you the efforts of the ministry through my desk. Um, to improve the environment for manufacturers in Dominica. So, um, the Entrepreneurship and Business Innovation Office is tasked with identifying gaps and developing programs and projects geared at addressing and improving the entrepreneurial landscape in Dominica. However, this is done with the intention to increase trade. We believe that our manufacturers play a significant role in increasing the trade of Dominica. The ministry has sought to do this through a number of interventions, micro and macro interventions. I will go further in detail. The first note is we had an in-depth analysis of Dominica business environment, support environment, sorry, from a client perspective. We wanted to know from the clients that operate in this space. We wanted to hear from them, the manufacturers, the entrepreneurs, the innovators we wanted to know what is their story we wanted to hear what is the experience within that space we wanted to identify the gaps or the limitations that hinder the user's ability to obtain maximum benefits from the supporting organizations it has been proven that persons open up better when they become a part of an initiative. Government, through the ministry, has developed its relationships with the majority of business support organizations to better understand and identify the limitations in meeting and surpassing the needs of the clientele. As we developed our relationships, we were able to overcome the gap of organizations not effectively communicating to us what are their limitations. That has so been addressed. We also had a progressive approach to unify business development efforts to decrease develop duplication and encourage specialization in the service delivery. We observed that mostly every organization operating in this space that provide assistance to manufacturers. They are trying to develop themselves as a one-stop shop. Although this is, is ambitious and noteworthy, it also comes with a significant cost. Just imagine eight organizations all providing training for manufacturers in starting up their business. But the majority of these organizations do not have the required funding to continue the training efforts. But that is not all. We also observe that the organizations involved, we also observe that there are certain organizations that are very effective in certain types of trainings. So it is our intention from the ministry standpoint to bring all the organizations together at the table 
and to decide amongst ourselves with the input from the users who is best at doing what. And allow that entity or that organization to perform and execute trainings within that space with the support of the other organizations. This in turn ensures that whoever gets training in a particular area obtains the best level of training available. It also brings organizations together to provide a complete package with the resources available on island. Move on. We also had we also had a number of micro interventions. The office that I am proud of operating in also provide one-on-one -on -one client and business evaluations. The ministry has opened its doors to business persons or should I say manufacturers for a complete evaluation on their business and on the individual. We have noticed that too many efforts is being done to support businesses but we seem to forget the persons that manage the businesses and there is a direct relation from the manager's ability or the manager's situation on the grounds and their capability to manage their business successfully. So we provide that type of evaluation. We have had a number of situations where persons have been deemed as bad investment by organizations and they may not be able to receive funding. However, through this initiative, the ministry was able to identify the story in the background, that story which may result in the person having some traumatic issues or the person is going through a rough time or personal issues and that in turn affects their ability to properly manage the business. So in, in a normal circumstances, persons like that would have been cast aside or labeled as bad investments. But through this initiative, the ministry can now provide the right professional help, which is counseling, to get that person over that hump in their life and that person ends up being or an effective business manager. We also organize cluster trainings. I think one of the days where we believe that mass trainings are the way to go, I think they always produce high numbers, but at the end of the day, how many persons actually receive and are able to implement the, the information they get. So we have decided that cluster trainings, um, identifying persons that need specific training in their business and put them together and provide the proper trainings for them. We also have business plan evaluation and consultation. Um, any, if you have a business plan or want to prepare a business plan, we are open to you. We would invite you to come in. We go over your business plan. We identify areas that need strengthening. We identify areas that are weak. And we provide that assistance to you. We also determine export potential and identify required interventions. We go out to meet the manufacturers. We look at their setup. We look at what they need to become export ready. And wherever the ministry can assist, we do so, whether it is financial or technical support. We also provide a number of um, resources and technical support to our manufacturers for collaborations, strong collaborations. One of our intentions is to unify the approach to conducting trainings. We believe that a lot of organizations on island is conducting trainings in their own way. However, I will use as an example business plan development. However, the financial institutions on island accept certain business plans and they refuse certain. And we believe with a coordinated training manual, all organizations that serve their clients will be able to produce a business plan that will be accepted across the board. We also want to tap into and develop and enhance the entrepreneurial mindset in our manufacturers. We believe that entrepreneurial training will empower the manufacturer not only to see what is needed, or not only to see money as is what is needed, but will look at their resources and be able to utilize these resources to get what they want. I think 
we no longer pay attention to the um, wonderful trade of butter. And butter is still being used today by those that cannot provide the funding. And there are many different tricks or methods that can be used through this entrepreneurial training. Now, we go down to direct manufacturing support that is done through the ministry. There is a grant of import duties and VAT waivers on purchase of packaging and labeling materials, equipment, and machinery used in the production of goods. This, the information and the detailed information for this can be found on the customs, Dominica Customs website, as stated on the screen. Um, $300,000 have been approved for online lending to manufacturers for Dominica Industrial Bank. This is done through the ministry. We go and we assess you, and then we send your application to the Dominica Industrial Bank for final review and then disbursement of funds. We also have small business loan financing available at a bank, which has been developed to meet the needs of Dominican manufacturers. Um, there is no one size fits all. What they do is they come in, they observe you, and they, cr they create a package just for you. And then last but not least, we have an innovative award that the ministry is going to launch next year where we are um, organizing an annual competition where manufacturers on island will be able to um, develop products or services in an innovative way and they will be judged and gauged on it to determine a winner and prize monies from first to fourth place will be given to try to stimulate that mindset of innovation, to try to stimulate that mindset of, a, of having an entrepreneurial culture in Dominica. So without further ado, that is the end of my presentation. All right, we'd really like to thank Mr. Danny Joseph, Entrepreneurship Business and Innovation Officer at the Ministry of Trade and Commerce. And he just spoke to funding and resources available for small business. Don't forget, we have a quiz coming up for you shortly where you will get to win something, either a voucher from SMAT or from Body Bliss Spa. So the questions will be based on the PowerPoint presentations you just saw. And we really want to give away these prizes. So stick around. You can get into the, the WhatsApp your Zoom, sorry, your Zoom meeting chat to get ready to type your answers to the question. And remember, for Zoom, you need to answer to answer two questions that contact on Zoom. If you're on Facebook, you just type in, in, in the chat, and we will be able to see if you will be the winner of our quiz this evening. And remember that quiz, the quiz results is going to come at the end, at the very end. So we need you to stick through with us. And if you have a friend who is a, an agro-processor, manufacturer, or a business student, please ask them, share, share the link, share the live, so they get to see it. Remember, we are also live on DBS Radio. And we are live on Dominica Bureau of Standards Facebook page as well. So we just heard from Mr. Danny Joseph. Earlier we heard from Ms. Keisha Joseph, technical officer at Dominica Bureau of Standards. So right now we'll just take a short 30 second break on screen and we'll be right back with our quiz question. Please stay right here with us. The label shall be steadfast. The statements on the label shall be prominent, clear, indelible, and readily legible by the consumer. The name and net contents of the good shall appear in a prominent position and in the same field of vision. Product name. The common name of the goods together with any trade name or brand name controlled by the manufacturer shall be declared on the label. List of ingredients. An accurate description of the major ingredients or components of the goods as is necessary shall be declared on the label. Net content. The net contents shall be declared on the label name and address or country of origin 
name and address of the manufacturer, packer, or distributor shall be declared. The country of origin of the good shall be declared. Example, product of Dominica. The country in which the final processing is performed shall be considered to be the country of origin. Language. Information on the label shall be in the English language. For export of goods to bilingual countries, all information on every container shall be shown in both official languages. Only the name and business address of the processor, manufacturer, packer, or distributor may be shown in one of the official languages. Instructions for use for pre-packaged goods. Instructions for use where applicable shall be included on the label as necessary to ensure correct utilization of the good. The inspection unit of the Dominica Bureau of Standards encourages consumers and manufacturers to be informed of the compulsory national labeling standards for prepackaged goods and prepackaged foods. It is your responsibility as a consumer or a manufacturer to be aware of all the labeling requirements. Thank you for viewing. Welcome back and thank you for staying right here with us on our live webinar, Key Processes to Unlock Excellence in Manufacturing. And we have a question from uh, the chat and that question is directed to Mr. Danny Joseph. Um, are we speaking to loans or grants that the ministry is making available to aspiring local manufacturers, agro-processors? The question goes to Mr. Danny Joseph. Yes, the, the funding available is through a loan facility at Aid Bank. Does that answer the question? Oh, can I add? Yes. There is grant funding available, not through our ministry, but we recommend you for grant funding available through the Ministry of Tourism under the Small Business Unit. So that is also a, a possibility once we feel that the manufacturer is at a place where they need that funding. The first person to answer is would be the winner, okay? But we'll announce the winner at the end of our live webinar right here. So I am seeing that we already have an answer to the question, what is the unit, what is the name of the unit at the Dominica Bureau of Standards? responsible for a verification of fuel pumps and weighing devices and we already have an answer in the chat so we'll move right along to the next uh, presentation and we have mr philip roll coordinator dominica youth business trust and he's going to give an overview of dybt and the resources available for a startup Yes, we'll move to his bio at this time. Mr. Philip Roll is the current coordinator of the Dominica Youth Business, Business Trust, where he works with young entrepreneurs across the island in the growth and development of youth enterprise. 
He uses any opportunity available to speak to, encourage, and support young people who want and wish to take on the risk and reward of entrepreneurship. He holds a BSc in management with a concentration in entrepreneurship honors from the University of the West Indies, Cavill Campus. Mr. Roll is also the current Deputy Speaker of the House of Assembly. So we'd like to introduce to you Mr. Philip Roll, Coordinator, Dominica Youth Business Trust. Okay. Uh, a pleasant good evening to you, Ms. Dominique. A pleasant good evening to um, the panelists here. Um, to all the, the, the viewers on, on social media as well as the listeners on the, the radio waves. Um, it's indeed a pleasure to be here. I mean, you heard it in my bio, any opportunity that I get to talk um, about the DYBT to young people, I'm here. So trust me, there was no convincing needed for me to be here um, this evening. Um, let me say uh, a special good evening to our minister, Dr. Addis King, Honorable Dr. Addis King, as well as our permanent secretary, um, Mrs. Sylvani Burton, um, the chief youth development officer, Mr. John Roach, and all the other persons listening. Um, before I continue, let me thank the, the Bureau uh, of Standards, the Dominica Bureau of Standards, um, for inviting me to be able to speak about the, the Dominica Youth Business Trust and what it is that we do and the role that we play in the, the growth and development of entrepreneurship, small business, but in particular, young youth enterprise. That, that is our forte. And, you know, it, it brings me great joy to be flanked by uh, a fellow client of the Dominica Youth Business Trust in, in the name of Mr. Linvo Ambo. So anytime I have the, the opportunity, you know, I, I always take it and I just want to say thank you to the, the Bureau of Standards for this opportunity. So just to, to say a bit about DYBT, um, anywhere that I go, I, I do say that, you know, DYBT is one of Dominica's best kept, kept secrets, unfortunately. Um, but we are making strides to ensuring that people across Dominica um, learn about the DYBT because the reality is we've been in operation well actually next month we will be in operation for 18 years so being here for 18 years I feel like everybody every young person who is interested in business development um, should know about the, the Dominica Youth Business Trust so I, I want to encourage everyone to, to spread the good news as far as the DYBT is concerned. So like I said, we, we officially launched um, on May 26, 2024 um, by Honorable Vince Henderson. He was the, the then Minister of, of Education, Human Resource Development, Sports and Youth Affairs. So I mean, it was really 18 years ago that um, this government decided that you know, youth and entrepreneurship um, are very important um, for the, the growth of our country. So we, you know, we, we definitely see in the, the, the fruits uh, of the investment made um, by this government. Um, one thing I would say, though, is that the, the DYBT is also an initiative of the, the Commonwealth Youth Program. And we operate under the auspices of the the Youth Development Division, which is under the Ministry of Youth Development and Empowerment, Youth Affairs, Gender, uh, Gender Affairs, Senior Security, and Dominicans with Disabilities. So our mission, our key mission at the Dominican Youth Business Trust is, is to empower youth in realizing their entrepreneurial potential by facilitating access to finance, technical and social assistance geared towards the development of viable business, thereby contributing to the growth and development of the national economy. So DYBT, we are located on, on 42 Kennedy Avenue. So for those of you who, who don't know, that is um, the old Jays building or the former Jays building. Uh, that's where we are located. and. Because we are youth, Dominica Youth Business Trust, we, we target men and women between the ages of 18 to 35 who are 
desirous of starting uh, a small business. Now, DYBT, we, we have four main pillars of support that we offer to entrepreneurs. Um, and this includes business training. We also have a loan guarantee facility of up to $20,000. Um, we also have business mentorship, business plan support, and consultations as well. So with respect to the training, training is a, a very key pillar of the Dominique Hill Business Trust. Um, you know, we take training very, very seriously because we believe that, you know, to build the capacity for young entrepreneurs is extremely important. Because, let's face it, you could have all the finance, you could have the money in your hand, and... If you do not know what to do with that money or how to properly utilize that money, then, I mean, that finance turns to, to nothing very quickly. So the, the building capacity of young entrepreneurs is extremely important, and we do so through three main programs. We have one program called the Entrepreneurial Development Program, which is a one-month program geared towards persons who are either in the idea stage of their business, so you have an idea, you you know you want to get involved in something, be it in this case, you know, manufacturing, you want to make punches, you want to make um, some type of local confectionery, but you're not sure how to go about doing it. So in that, that one month training program, we basically walk you through the steps of looking at that idea, assessing that idea, and seeing how to, to take it to the stage where it is now a, a viable business. And we also assist in the, the the creation of a bankable um, business plan. We also have uh, another training program called the Small Business Assistance Facility. And this training program is geared towards um, entrepreneurs who are already in business and have been trading for at least uh, one year. So I have some good news. This um, Small Business Assistance Facility training will actually be, be taking place in June. Um, registration is, is currently open. So I do encourage you to check us out on the Dominique Hill Business Trust Facebook page if, if that's something that you're interested in. And the Small Business Assistance Facility training is a three half day session. So we realize that because we are targeting entrepreneurs who are already in business, it would be hard to pull them out of their business for an entire month. So that is why we have made this training very targeted and directed towards existing business owners. So we have it for three half days. And like I said, that will be in June from the, the 7th to the 9th of June 2022. And we also have uh, another trading program called the Social Enterprise Incubator Program. And that is really geared towards persons who are desirous of, of starting a, a social venture, social entrepreneurship. Now, it's a term that, you know, is new to a lot of people, but you are in a business, but you also looking to solve some type of social problem, be it in your community, etc. So, and this is also another program that we will be sending out a call for applications very, very soon. So once again, I encourage you to, to check us out on our DYBT Facebook page. All right, so in terms of the loan guarantee facility, we also have an agreement with the aid bank, NDFD and various cooperative credit unions to administer our loan guarantee facility. And what that is, is that we provide security for loans of up to $20,000 for our clients. And note I said the word loan, and unlike, unlike my, my good friend at the, the Ministry of Trade, there's no grant, well, there's grants, but this is a loan. We're, we're dealing with a loan, and I, I think I need to make that abundantly clear because the thing about loans is that they were meant to be paid back. So. We, we do provide security. So if you are a young person and you wanted to get finance for your business and you went to a financial institution, one of the first things that they would ask you for is for some type of land title. And, you know, we realize that this is something that is, is probably hard to come by for a lot of young persons in particular. So that is how we have instituted the, the loan guarantee facility. That's the point of the loan guarantee facility, to make access to financing easier. And it's not just once you do a trading, you automatically get the loan guarantee. There is an approval process. And then we also provide business support. So it, once you do the training, you know, we don't just leave you out in the open, out in the wind. 
Um, we do provide that business support in office to really help you develop that bankable business plan. Um, and we do those consultations before, during, and after the establishment of the, the businesses of the young entrepreneurs. And then we also have a, a business mentorship program. You know, um, being a young person in business, sometimes you can feel like you are out on your own doing things. So um, we also have a, a mentorship program whereby we pair um, mentors, and these are persons from either public or private sector, and we, we pair those persons with um, entrepreneurs. And that relationship is established for a one-year period. And that's really somebody that, you know, you can bounce ideas off of, get guidance from. And what we've seen is that persons who have mentors, you know, tend to be more successful or at least make, you know, less expensive mistakes. So if you are interested in, in learning more about the Dominique U Business Trust, I have put our website there, www.hub.dybt.gov.dm. And you can also like us on Facebook for um, updates as to the different training programs we have and anything else that's going on with the Dominique U Business Trust. I guarantee you that if you are a young person involved in business, the, the Dominique U Business Trust is, is you know, who you want to align yourself with um, to further grow and develop that business. So with that being said, uh, I'd like to thank you for your time and once again thank you for the opportunity to be on this panel. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Philip Roll, for such an informative presentation. Mr. Philip Roll is also the Deputy Speaker of the House of Assembly and he is the coordinator of Dominica Youth Business Trust. So before we get into our next speaker, we'll just run a quick ad from the DYBT and we'll be right back. If I entered the business world without first going through DYBT, I would have failed or I would not be as far as I am today. Before starting the DYBT program in 2019, I lacked the knowledge and skills and direction and even confidence to start um, my own business, to launch out on my own. Well, I think, you know, the DYBT has been a one-stop shop for anyone who is looking to become an entrepreneur or any young person who has an established business and wants to see their business go to the next level. So we're actually creating the DYBT hub of entrepreneurship where we provide electronic support and physical support to our entrepreneurs. So we're going to create a space that you can network, they can access resources, but most of all that our agro-processors and our crafters will get a physical space to come and produce. What I'm looking forward to most about this hub project is a space for processors and producers to experiment and to create new and exciting recipes and new and exciting products in a safe and standardized space. What the virtual hub will do is that it will create a space where entrepreneurs can get um, relevant information relevant resources such as templates let's say you want to do a contract to to hire a person to do a job or you wanted to get a warning letter template so those are things that will form part of dybt hubs resources which will help entrepreneurs in the management of their business i believe the dominica youth business trust is doing a tremendous job when it comes to allowing young entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs in general to have resources that they can use and mentors and advisors that they can turn to when it comes to running an effective small business. Knowledge is important because without business knowledge, you can have the finance, but if you don't have the knowledge, then that finance becomes useless pretty quickly. So we have very, very strong training programs that have assisted in building a lot of successful young entrepreneurs in Dominica. On completion of the 
the training session with DYBT, I was fortunate enough to receive the grant. And with that grant money, they bumped me up from two hives to 14. And that's a tremendous difference. The mentors are excellent, especially when you find mentors who are passionate about another person having a business idea and really want to take it to fruition and make it successful. And they also have an advisory board, which I definitely benefited from, which covered law, secretarial administrative work, marketing. So we all know that Dominica has many bubbling small businesses, but we don't know where to find them. So what we're looking to do is create a directory for our DYBT entrepreneurs. So if you're looking for a particular service or a particular product, then you could type in that on the directory and hopefully get your pick. You have to have a vision. You dream, yes, but you have to translate that dream into a vision, into a mission, into action, and into something that you know I'm in it for the long haul. Um, there's never been a better time to be a client of the Dominique U Business Trust. I am extremely grateful for what DYBT has been doing for me since the first day I stepped into the office. Um, it has not been easy. It's been extremely challenging, but that's the life of an entrepreneur. There is not enough words to express my feelings and what they have done for me in building my character and my business. Any young individual in Dominica, any young person with that burning entrepreneurial desire, I would invite you to contact us at the DYBT, either via email, telephone, Facebook, or come on down and visit us at 42 Kennedy Avenue at our office. We'll be looking forward to seeing you. They not only look into give you information for you to go into business, but like they hold in your hand and assisting you through the process, guiding you along. So if you feel that you slip in some way, you fall in along by the wayside, they will give you a call. They will always check up on you. So it's not just about the name DYBT, but the individuals behind the scenes that make DYBT what it is. Thank you for staying right here with us on our live webinar, Key Processes to Unlock Excellence in Manufacturing. We are happy that you have taken the time to join us to learn about all the processes which it takes to get through to excellence. And right now we are going to move straight ahead into Manufacturing Excellence Unlocked. And for, and for this presentation, we have Mr. Lean War. Ambo, who is the Managing Director of Alozi Business Ventures. And he will speak to Manufacturing Excellence Unlocked. All right, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm happy to be here. And, you know, I took this, um, this topic from an angle of really manufacturing in Dominica, um, considering the fact that a lot of us are small manufacturers or equipments are small. And, you know, the whole process of growing from that cottage or home base, um, business into something commercial and really professional. Um, so, um, on our slide, uh, Manufacturing Excellence Unlocked. And I put in Dominica at the bottom because I really want to kind of you know, emphasize on that aspect of it. And the process, the, the wins and the losses we had over the eight years of operating. And, you know, those are good um, um, experiences that we can share. So first, what is manufacturing? Um, the term manufacturing refers to processing of raw materials or parts into finished goods for the use of tools, human labor, machinery, and chemical processes. Um, there are many reasons you could want to manufacture, whether it's for just to make an income, whether you see a product that you want to improve on, 
or something you just want to share with everyone. Um, so the first step to that would be to get your product idea. And the, the next slide. Yeah, so you, um, in your everyday life, you know, you might come up with an idea just out of, you know, just thinking of something, you might see something out um, in, in a supermarket or something that you like, and you see a way that you could improve it. Um, you could come up with something that you feel solves a problem. And so when you have that aha moment, you say, okay, this is something that could be, that could have demand, that could be marketable. And after you have your, the, your idea, you go into step two, which should basically be kind of research that product. So before you spend any money into going and make that product, you want to really ask around and find out whether it's something that people will, will need. Um, so the moment you, through that research, you'd find out what equipment you will need. Um, you go around to do some market research, the potential demand of the product. I um, really want to know, is the product really useful? Um, will it be profitable? And, you know, just to find out who your clientele will be. So that will kind of give you a, a general idea as, um, as to, you know, whether you really want to go into that manufacturing of that product. Um, the third step would be, um, you know, you try and come up with your design. Um, if you're doing a food product, you'd want to come up with a recipe for it. Um, if you're doing a um, non-food item, you'd want to do a blueprint. Um, since it's manufacturing, you're going to have to think about your production flow um, from the, the step one to creating the product to um, the final step of it, and also the whole aspect as to um, what the Bureau of Standards spoke, the whole safety and those type of stuff. You don't want to think of how you're going to package your product. The packaging has to be um, user-friendly and those type of stuff. Um, step four will be testing. So after you do those three steps now, you're kind of more confident and you really want to create something tangible. Um, you create a prototype. Um, you might do it yourself. Once again, in Dominica, you might want to do it at home or you, you contract someone to do it for you. Um, your prototype doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to be functional. It needs to be you know, at least um, close enough to the, the final thing that you want. And you, you show it to your potential customers to get feedback. Um, it's a food product. At that point, you'd want to make sh um, test out your shelf life. And in terms of the whole production flow of the manufacturing, you kind of want to, you know, like during your prototype, like kind of figure it out. And since you're actually making the first concept of the product, you can kind of have a general idea as to how your production flow will be. Um, step five would be manufacturing and assembling. Um, at this point, no, you need to get small scale, um, you need to get um, equipment. Um, at this point, um, like me, I went through the um, Dominica Youth Business Trust program and I qualified for the $20,000 um, um, loan <laughs> guarantee. But really and truly, um, with the $20,000 at the time, the, the equipment you're able to buy is really whole small home equipment. So you, from that point, you really have to find a way to leverage that $20,000 because really and truly, you, small equipment will break down often. Take it from me. <laughs> <laughs> so you need to try and so those first equipments will really be to kind of you know buy a smaller version of the larger equipments and really put it together to understand your production flow and from there you can begin streamlining your procedures your procedure and to also have an idea as to the pricing because in your business plan you'll have a rough idea of the pricing or what you want it to be but when you actually start the actual production, you realize that based on the, the time taken and all those things, your overheads, you have to kind of readjust your, your initial pricing. Um, step six, um, feedback and testing. So after you start doing the whole uh, manufacturing assembly, um, at this stage, you can start doing small batch production and you can offer the product to a, a larger audience or focus group of people to get proper feedback. So at this point, it's better than the prototype. So you can get a more um, realistic feedback. Um, your production flow at the time, you can test out the capacity. And at this point, based on the feedback, you can readjust your recipe. Um, step seven, 
is the official release. So once you go through all those initial stages, you're confident and then you can full on launch your product. Um, so the whole concept of in Dominica, you find that in manufacturing, um, it's um, plant and equipment. It's, it's, it's it, you know, it's, it's expensive, it's capital intensive. And to do manufacturing properly, you need to be able to get real proper commercial equipment and you need space. So in the next slide, I'm going to talk about um, some keynotes for succeeding in manufacturing in Dominica. And that's because you, you have to be flexible. There's no one way to do things. And I would assume that I know that each country you do things according to the economy and the environment. Um, so here in Dominica, I can see when you, whatever product you have, um, really research the, the exact number of raw materials available to you. Don't just say it have, it have a lot of this, a lot of that. Find out how much there is, how consistent it is, and create a real tangible number. Because um, sup supply, you need consistent production. Any cut in your manufacturing will um, deeply affect your, your business. Um, find a reliable distribution network. Um, distribution is expensive and it's really time consuming. Um, concentrate on manufacturing, find a partner to distribute for you, or else you'll find yourself on the road every day. Um, stay in the factory. Um, or if you have a way to create a distribution network, um, that can work also. Um, have a detailed production procedure, write it down. Um, you're going to want to the product to be consistent every time. You want anyone who comes into your workplace to be able to just read the document and be able to produce whatever it is. Have a detailed written down process full of everything. And the number one um, priority should be to increase your capacity. The reason for that is um, we have gotten orders, export orders, but no, all large companies want large amounts because that's the only way it's economical for them. If you're only producing 20 cases or something, there's no way you're going to export. They will tell you no. They want 200 cases, 300 cases. So your number one priority as a small business should find, should really be reinvest in proper commercial equipment, increase your skill. The moment you can produce large amounts, it's a lot easier to get export um, customers because you can simply go to any distributor in any country and say you have this product, they like it. They want 300 cases. You can say, okay, you'll get it next month. But if you can only produce 20, they're not going to pay you money and wait eight months for your equipment to come and then for you to send to them. So your, your first goal in everything should be to um, get to scale as fast as you can. And even in the terms of loan, $20,000 loan, if you really reinvest in skill, you know, one order can pay back your loan, you know? So put it as, <laughs> put it as your priority. <laughs> yeah, put it as your priority. Um, next slide. Yeah, so constantly improving your equipment. Also, your process. Um, the way you initially thought your procedures would be, you find that as you, as you, Im as you grow, you find um, more efficient ways to do things or, you, or um, steps that you need to cut out and those things. So really in reinvest them, get them um, real um, technical help from qualified people to help with your process and your equipment. Um, I learned this from Maria and and um, COVID, always have emergency <laughs> cash. <laughs> have a couple more, at least three months, you know, to pay your light bills, your loans, and your wages. Um, it helps. And even those equipment breakdown, you find that um, here, there are not many people who could really fix your equipment. So you either have to do it yourself, or you have to um, order a new one. And those two months for waiting for your equipment and stuff, that's, you need to have cash to be able to go through those things. High employers, do not do it yourself. Um, like I say, write down your procedures so your employees or anyone you employ can operate your business. You don't need to be there all the time. And incorporate your company. That's, I think that's very important, um, simply because there'll be a time, let's say you scale up and you get a large order, but you don't have the capital. Your business is already incorporated. You could approach someone who has been interested and say, hey, we got an order for 400 cases, but we need the money for the raw materials. They can say, okay, so you can finally sell equity to them and have the financing to be able to provide that, that order. And last slide, you know, we went through um, Eric, yeah, Erica, 
Erica affected us also. Um, PT Tavan was a huge customer of ours. Um, we went from Maria, we were down for two years, and then COVID, basically same thing. And the one thing, you know, have fortitude. Be able to really stay strong despite what the feedback you get from people, despite the naysayers, despite, <laughs> you know, your bank calling you. <laughs> <laughs> despite whatever, you know, be strong in your vision and just keep pushing. And the good thing is, especially when you know your, your, your product, whatever you're providing to people, you, people call you and give you good feedback. They tell you how much you love it. You have consistent repeat customers. You definitely should not give up. So keep pushing, keep improving your product, and just be strong and keep with the vision. And thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you to Mr. Lean for Ambo for such a very insightful presentation on manufacturing excellence unlocked. As promised, we are giving you chances to win a gift certificate from Body Bliss Spa, a voucher from Esmat, or a token from Dominica Bureau of Standards. So right now we are going to run quiz number two to give you that chance to win. Question number two, and again, the first person who answers in the chat, whether it's on Facebook or Zoom, will get to win. So the question, list two of the trainings offered by the Dominica Youth Business Trust. We hope you were taking notes. So it looks like we, we have an answer. <laughs> it, looks, it looks like we have an answer in the chat. All right, so let's just move straight ahead into our next presentation. But before we do so, let's take a short minute break and we will come back. Hi, and welcome to the Dominica Bureau of Standards Inspection Unit. Did you know that there are currently eight compulsory national yeah, labeling standards to be monitored in Dominica? As consumers, do you take the time to read your labels? Are you aware of the requirements which should be placed on these labels? Today, we are here to educate you on the requirements of the standards for pre-packaged goods and pre-packaged foods. General presentation of information. The label shall be steadfast. The statements on the label shall be prominent, clear, indelible, and readily legible by the consumer. The name and net contents of the food shall appear in a prominent position and in the same field of vision. Pre-packaged foods product name. A pre-packaged food shall indicate the true nature of food and shall be specific and not generic. To avoid misleading or confusing the consumer, the true nature and physical condition of the food shall be declared, for example, dried, concentrated, reconstituted, or smoked. List of ingredients. Except for single ingredient foods, a list of ingredients shall be declared on the label. The list of ingredients shall be headed or preceded by an appropriate title that consists of or includes the term ingredient.
Okay, thank you for staying with us on our, our live webinar, Key Processes to Unlock Excellence in Manufacturing. So you just heard from Mr. Linvo Ambo, who spoke to the topic, Manufacturing Excellence Unlocked. And right now, we're moving to our headline, Campbell's Business System headline graphic designer that we are working with. So Mr. Kester Labad, who is the supervisor in the graphic department, graphic designing department. For the past 15 years, we'll take you through this part of the webinar. Mr. Kester Labad, the floor is yours and welcome. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Good evening, I am Julie Boston George, customer service and sales rep for Campbell's for the last 30 years. Um, we are happy to be here to briefly share with you some of our pointers on the importance of quality in design and printing when creating branding for your company and products. Campbell's is very well known for providing printing related services and we are able to share certain guidelines that will make the process easier which in turn gives maximum results to you, our customers. We pride ourselves in having the best machines that give the best quality in print and a team of great designers who deliver work you can be proud to call your own. We are happy to be partnering with the Dominica Bureau of Standards who have trained us on exactly what is expected of labeling for products to be out on the market. This information combined with our experience is what we pass on to you whenever you engage us with your design and printing projects. I turn over to Mr. Labad who will go through the processes with you. Thank you. Good day everyone. Um, my name is Kester Labad, as already stated. Um, what does it take to deliver quality in printing? Um, to talk about that, we need to talk about design first because design is key, number one thing before we can do any printing, we have to design first. So in this, we'll be covering design, the importance of design and branding, aspects of graphic design, compulsory information for label designs, the use of online applications, and in printing, we'll be discussing requirements for printing and printing tier systems. Quality and graphic, quality in design and printing. Next slide. Design and branding. To talk about design, we first have to talk about printing. To talk about design in relation with printing, sorry, we must first talk about branding. Branding is the process of creating a strong positive reception of your company and its products in your customers' minds. Simply put, your brand is your promise to your customer. It tells them what they can expect from your products and services and it differentiates you from your customers, from your competitors, sorry. Your brand is derived from, derived from who you are and who you want to be and the people perceive you to be. This can be achieved through graphic design. Design is a form of visual communication with the use of images and words to relay your message to your customer. Design is key aspect of branding. In other words, Design and branding is what you relate to your customers. You is part of you. It is, it is what you want to show or you want your product to be perceived, especially in marketing. Um, so you have to choose your color and your branding wisely. Next slide. In graphics, there are two types of graphics. Raster graphics and vector graphics. Raster graphics are pixels 
each pixel is contain a little information that makes an entire image. The more pixels there are, the more the image looks real and accurate. Any digital image you, is made up of pixels, and when someone talks about resolution of a computer monitor or TV, they are referring to the number of pixels. Vector graphics are lines and points, not pixels. The lines and points are mathematical equations. So when enlarging an image, the computer just recalculates the equations to make the image bigger. So bitmaps and vector uh, pictures are pixels and vectors are text. So you need to use a lot of vector images to get a true accurate color to get the highest resolution as you can. Reels. Next slide, please. No, same slide. Go back. Sorry, sorry. Color mode. That is very key in printing. We have RGB and we have CMYK. RGB is red, green, and blue. CMYK is cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. This is key in printing because RGB is based on digital work. So TVs, phones, monitors are all based on RGB while printers print CMYK. As you can see on the screen, these are the two, these two greens are the same green. One is RGB, one is CMYK. A printer cannot replicate RGB, but it can do the CMYK. So a lot of the problems we get is people look at their phones and they print and wonder why it is not the same. Two different medias, RGB, CMYK. So I want people to understand the correlation between the two and when you're doing your graphical work to make sure you engage that with your designer and so forth to understand. Next. Resolution. Another key aspect of design is resolution. Always choose the highest, highest resolution you can when you're creating your labels, when you're creating your design. 300 dpi and up. Anything lower than that, you will start to get blurriness, you start to get binding, and that does create a lot of issues where, again, people's expectations and the results at the end are totally, they, do, they have a little problem and issue. So please try and get 300 dpi if you can hire a photographer to take your pictures for you. Pictures on the web are usually 72 dpi. So pulling pictures from the web can be a little tricky, especially and with copyright also, we have some issues with copyright. Next is bleed. Another key aspect of printing is bleed. Bleed is the area uh, extra area on your label, about a quarter inch. We need that in printing for cutting purposes. Um, if you want, some people tend to, uh, customers tend to put their text on the edge. So when it cuts, sometimes it be the letters cut, the pictures cut, and that's another problem we have. So please include bleed in your design. Next slide. Compulsory information for label design. That is key to be accepted for Bureau of Standards, especially if you want to have your product on the shelf. So as you can see, we have a sample of a product here. So you have the product name, which is name of the business. You have the general name. You have the list of ingredients. You need that. The size of the label, the expiry date, the patch number, the barcode, the instructions, the net content, and the contact information. All that, all that information is necessary in a label design. Next. Using online apps to create designs. That is not 
That topic that is, I say that, is not recommended, but I guess I have to talk about it. Um, there are a lot of apps, free apps, online. Anybody can use it. They are basically built for entrepreneurs, small business, startups. Um, I don't want to, 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 to discourage people from to yeah. you to try to help themselves. They can no monetize, not everybody that have the, the resources to hire a graphical designer or agency, but it is not recommended. But if you have to use it, please use high resolution pictures. Please save a PDF file. And please apply your bleed to your graphical book. Next, printing. Um, as canvas machines, we focus highly on printing. We do designing, but we also do a lot of the printing, and we have seen an increase in the printing of labels for sure for the, from the past years. So next slide, we go to put a requirement for printing. Um, to maintain top quality printing, printers like ourselves require the cooperation of the customer to prepare the file correctly for print. Before sending us your file to print, please make sure that the file meets the following requirements. Bleed. I already talked about bleed already, that is the extra space, the extra colors, the extra images around your file, size of your label to help us when we want to cut. Safety zone is a quarter inch inside of the size of the label you want to place your text, your images, so they do not get cut out in the cutting process. Resolution. High resolution, as I spoke about, 300 and DPI. Do not use pictures from the web or use high quality pictures from the web. Do not um, use WhatsApp pictures. Or, you know, WhatsApp pictures lowers the quality. Do not send us WhatsApp pictures. Next. Fonts. Fonts is key. Outline your fonts because fonts change from Computer to computers, not everybody have the same font, so please put your fonts, outline your fonts, and use a proper size font when you want to print in a label for it to be clear, to be read. Colors, convert all colors to from RGB to CMYK, I spoke about that already. Um, file formats, we will accept, we mostly accept PDFs, but we will also accept um, AI, EPS, TIFFs, um, we will, in certain, in certain situations, we will accept publisher files, but so highly recommended, but it is that you have, it is that you have, it is that you have. <laughs> Next, this is our printing tier system at Campbell. Um, we have broken down printing into three tiers. The first tier is for the, the smallest customers we have, the working customers, one to ten sheets, those are just starting off. As um, Foucault Dominic said, when you, you just start, you need samples for your business. That is where you can fall. The second tier is press printing, that is the, the large sheets. It's about two, three days to process. Between 100, 10 to, 10 to 100 sheets, because we usually, oh yes, sorry, we usually do not um, price on labels, but we price on sheets, because every label has a different size, different cut, so we usually price on sheets. So the tier two is for medium scale, or when you have a, when you start to um, increase your production, 
and then we have the larger scale which is the web printing that is a very large medium to large scale printing thousand labels and up you, you get your labels on the roll um tier three requires a lot more effort a lot more time um you need your files to be prepared properly um yes yeah, so well next yeah, so that's it um, for my presentation. I would like to just say um, thank you for having me here. Um, we at Cabers are open to anyone who wants to come and have a discussion about design, about printing. We will facilitate you. We will help you. We will see your needs. Uh, um, and thank you very much for the presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Kestelabad. I, I, I learned a lot. <laughs> I learned a lot, especially about the online apps for running graphics. A lot of times we run to certain apps. And yes, indeed, thank you very, very, very much, Campbell's, for coming through and informing us on the standards. is a standard for printing. Thank you so much. So right now we move to a smart supermarket, Mrs. Medine Pielwe who is the store manager at Esmat and also of Springfield Trading. Thank you so much, Esmat, for being here this evening, and we are very excited to hear your presentation. The floor is yours. Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, thanks to Bureau Standards for having Esmat represent um, at this webinar. Um, the topics we are going to cover basically will be the food safety at our business um, or at supermarkets, um, the receipt of fresh produce and branding and labeling concepts. And um, we will end with the purpose um, why we expect agro-processors and manufacturers alike to follow the standards that are set by Bureau of Standards, Ministry of um, trade as well as the supermarket itself. Um, Springfield Trading um, Limited is the parent company of Esmart and uh, Springfield Trading has been one of Dominica's leading distributors for over four decades with a wide range of pop popular brands. Um, a lot of us are aware of these brands um, and use them on, in our daily lives. We have the Buster, we have Cricks, um, Bermudez, Biscuits, Holiday Snacks, and, and the likes. Esmart itself um, was um, opened or commenced operations in Decem on December 11, 2015, um, after the management on directors identified a gap in the growing merchandise market that lacked quality customer service and a one-stop shopping experience in a convenient environment. ESMAT um, aim is to be a one-stop shop. Um, the supermarket um, caters to a wide variety of customers and support many local suppliers, agro-processors and manufacturers. We remain um, one of the top supermarkets on Ireland, um, even in this ever-changing industry and uh, difficult times. We, our mission is to satisfy our customers' needs and, quality and provide quality premium products and consistent service. Um, SMART and by extension Springfield Trading, um, vision is quality in everything. Uh, we'll start with the fresh produce. Um, we in Dominica are considered an agricultural environment, which means there's a lot of farmers growing the same products. And by extension, a lot of agro-processors probably um, providing the same end-user items as well. Um, the market is very competitive, and um, as in all business environment, prices are determined by availability, season, and supply and demand, obviously. Um, we support as much as we can local suppliers, um, producers, bakers, manufacturers. And even if we, we try to, to attempt, to, or attempt rather, to support as much as we can the suppliers, we have to understand also the restrictions we have in space availability 
So uh, we may not be able, even if we would like, to take all the items that are brought to us. Um, this may not be possible, again, because of space. And it, it, it is something that we have to decide um, which one we take in based on pricing, obviously, because people are conscious of cost, um, based on labeling requirements and everything else that is um, provided or expected from the Bureau of Standards. Um, if the items are, are not up to standard or does not meet the requirements, um, we, may be, we may have to reject the item. Um, that includes produce as well, as well as the um, end product or end manufactured products as well. Um, as it relates to, to produce, um, supermarket on a whole, because of the, the the item that in because of the, the perishability of the product we experience a high rate of losses due to spoilage the quantity of goods taken also has to be monitored to avoid these high losses that we experience um, Food safety um, is also something that is of concern to supermarkets. And uh, food safety refers to the conditions and practices that preserve the quality of food to prevent contamination, foodborne illnesses, and foodborne, foodborne illnesses, sorry. The Food Safety and Inspection Service of the United States Department of Agriculture educates consumers about the importance of food safety and hand food handling and how to reduce the risk associated with food bond illness. Um, at SMART, it is important that foods which are brought in by agro-processors are fit for consumption and free of food bond illnesses, such as bacteria, viruses, toxins, and environmental pollutants. Um, yes, we may say that the we are not able to control that because when we get the end results, it's already packaged and everything else. So we may not be able to control what it is. But however, the negative feedback that will be derived from anybody who experiences any um, food poisoning, for, for, for example, um, will most likely will fing point fingers at SMAT because they purchase the items at SMAT. Um, so we also have to be careful of where we take the items from, who we take the items, and also pay attention to maybe where it's produced, how it's produced, and whether the people are living up to the standards that are expected from the environmental health. Um, Agroprocessors have to ensure that the processing plants or areas are regulated according to the Bureau of Standards and approved by Ministry of Environment and Health. Um, consumers purchase products directly from SMART for consumption. Um, that means that SMART is one of the key, the last key points of the food supply chain. Um, this places the consumer and the company at high risk. Consumer, consuming a product which causes food bond disease can lead to negative publicity for the company as well as the agro-processors. Um, in that the, as I mentioned about SMAT, as it relates to the agro-processors, your labeling um, speaks a lot of your product. It advertises for yourself. Um, so even if the, the, sub, the consumer might say that they buy it from SMAT, the negative um, feedback will also um, point to you as the agro-processor um, because they will, you know, based on the labeling, they too can contact you. Your information will be there, like um, the gentleman from Campbell's has mentioned your contact information, your address, everything would be on there. So they too can also um, reach out to you in reference to any negative impact that your product has provided. Um, as we continue with the food safety and packaging requirements, um, the legislation in, Dom in Dominica details that all products should meet certain key labeling criteria. And the food labeling is the means where consumers are provided with relevant information about the foods that they are purchasing. Um, all products at SMAT should include um, ingredients, nutritional facts, place of origin, storage life, or best before dates, allergens, handling, and preparation, and barcodes. Um, 
we should we also um, look for item for information about the diets because some people are no more health conscious. Um, we have the vegans. We have people who are um, gluten free, um, looking to the gluten free um, and items like that. So we have to ensure that these items are fairly labeled um, for the people who are health conscious. Um, we look into the health, the quality and taste, traceability, food safety, sustainability, and the ethics of um, food pro production. Yeah, as it relates to fresh produce, um, a lot of times, like we tell the, the suppliers of the fresh produce, sometimes we have to put ourselves in the, in the um, shoes of the purchasers um, or the consumers who come to the supermarket. And if you, as the supplier of the fresh produce, um, go to a supermarket and will not buy a product because of the way it looks or because of the condition, um, as you can see on screen, the different bit, bit difference between items that are acceptable and unacceptable, um, we would not encourage you to bring products that you yourself or you should have, an, like you said above here, the, the ethics of the products of the providers that you as an ethical provider should not produce or to bring to Smart or any supermarket a product that you as a supplier will not purchase at any supermarket. Um, again, we have a, another photo below. Um, again, because of COVID, everybody is a bit more conscious about the handling of products. So we are also trying to encourage persons to ensure that they bring the products in a condition that is fit for um, sale and limit the amount of um, interaction or handling that the consumers are expected to, to do with that. Um, as it relates to branding and labeling, branding, labeling, and marketing concepts, um, as, a, as a manufacturer, um, labeling um, and branding takes a lot of money. And we have the nice fellows from DYBT and <laughs> Ministry of Trade <laughs> who um, will provide you with the grants and the loans and so forth <laughs> into going into your labeling and branding. Um, branding and labeling speaks a lot about your product and it captures the eyes of the consumers. Um, as it relates to branding, all products have a brand name which is important as it helps the customers to build product recognition and customer loyalty um, to ensure quality and consistency and to capitalize on brand exposure. Um, like we said earlier, we have a quite a bit of local products at Smart, and we have a few here just for your viewing pleasure. We have Cold Pot Soaps, we have Frampton Delights, um, Dr. Herb, which is a local tea, and obviously Capco, which is also local, um, locally made teas. And of course we carry Choco Dominic as well. <laughs> 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 um, so um, as it relates to labeling as well, we were talking earlier about the, the importance of having information in your labels. Uh, we have, I have two products on here where you can see one where you have a lot of information. It might not be very clear on the screen, but by the look of it, you can see one has minimal information and a lot, one has a lot of information. Um, so going into the store and to be health conscious, a lot of people like a lot of information. So um, most likely people will choose the one where they can find a lot of detail information. Um, as it relates to labeling, um, a label is an information tag or wrapper seal or imprinted message that is attached to a product or its package. Its main function is, to, is for product identification to inform customers about the product's contents and give directions for its use. There are three kinds of labels. Um, we have the brand, um, we have uh, descriptive labels, and we have great labels. Um, as it is related here, the grade labels uh, states the high, the quality of the products. The descriptive labels provide description, which includes the date and storage in conf um, storage information, 
and the brand labels give the trademark and logo information of the um, item. Um, as it relates to marketing, um, products can be marketed use, uh, utilizing the following. Um, you have content marketing, which includes social media, Facebook, um, and the likes. We have introductory pricing, um, where you just, like Mr. Choco Dominic said, um, you introduce your price. Obviously, you want to introduce it to the market. You maybe introduce it at a lower price, not ignoring your cost, obviously. Um, but you put a price where, you know, you introduce it, everybody taste it, and at, as time goes by, you gradually increase on it so you can make your own margin um, and profit. Um, we have, re um, you can also have repeat buyer rewards, merchandising products at outlets, um, building customer experience through sampling opportunities, which we do at SMAT. Um, promotions and discounts on products, um, building awareness through advertising. Um, again, just for exercise sake, if you can look on the screen, we have three different um, labeling concepts. One apparently does not have any labels, and obviously you have two others um, which can show you the, mark the packaging and as well as the labels. So at a look at that, you can see based on your labels, based on your packaging, which one will attract you more as a, co as a, as a consumer. So in, in developing a product, like um, Ms. Choco Dominic said as well, that you know, your packaging is also important because at a, at a glance, you have to be able, and all of these items are this, uh, almost the same product category. All of them are cakes. Um, so if you go in a supermarket, your label says a lot, and you have to see which one attracts you as a consumer. Um, why follow standards and labeling concepts? Um, branding is the process of attaching uh, meaning to a specific organization, company, product, or service by creating and shaping a brand in the consumer's mind. Um, labeling is also, important, is also an important factor that helps um, in the selling of the product. Um, labeling, labeling also helps in grading the products and it provides information required by the law. Um, labeling is one of the important aspects of marketing um, as well. Um, labeling is very important as it helps in attracting the con con customer labeling. Um, sorry. Labeling is very important as it helps in attracting the customer. Labeling serves as an identity for the product. Um, it differentiates a product, a certain product from others on the shelves in the supermarket. It helps to spread awareness among the customers about the item they are using, and it also provides various other details about the products. Um, marketing informs your customers about the products or services you're offering them. Through marketing, the customer gets to know about the value of the products, their usage, the and additional information that might be helpful to the customer. It creates brand awareness and makes the business stand out. Um, one of the things that are also important in the supermarkets, uh, like um, the gentleman from Campbell also mentioned, is, is barcoding. And that is, all that is important in the supermarket um, because not only from a marketing standpoint where you can keep track of your sale of your items, um, as we can see from the picture here, um, one item has a barcode and one doesn't. If uh, you as a, as, a, as a supplier want to find out how, how your sale movement on, on your product, this can be aided or facilitated by the use of the barcode because the barcode, that is, the barcode is something that is unique to you. I mean, some people, again, cost effective. Um, we might think it's a bit expensive. Um, I think Bureau of Standards offer it for about $75 per product, um, but it's an, an investment that is for yours to keep. And it also um, help us to, because you as a customer come to the supermarket, we, as you can experience yourself, you stand in line waiting for the cashier to look up a product. It takes a while. Um, with the barcode you scan, my, the line moves a little faster. Um, so it serves its purpose, um, and with a barcode, you can also export internationally. Um, so it's it's benefit. Um, some people, <laughs> some people, you know, find it online. 
issues, <laughs> which is not advisable uh, because we get a lot of issues where people, you know, go um, back door through the black market, so to speak, to retrieve the, the, the barcode where we had an instant where we had three different products with the same barcode. Um, so we advise people to do it leg 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 legitimately and through the Bureau of Standards. Um, so we avoid all of these issues. Okay, so just in conclusion, um, labels and barcodes are all additional expenses to the cost of the products, not including, um, you know, just a word of advice to the, to the, to the agro processors. Well, I think I have it lower down. Um, but when you are manufacturing, though you don't want to, to outcost yourself from the market, we also have to understand that as, as supermarkets, we also have to put a markup on our products and as well as the VAT. So you might come to the supermarket, you might sell it on the roadside for $30, and then you come to the supermarket and it's like $40. And, you know, <laughs> when you scratch your head and you're like, okay, you know, it's expensive, but you, the supermarket also has its cost. And we do have to put a markup on all items. And because we have a threshold of, of sales, we also have to pay VAT and we are liable to pay VAT. So we do put VAT on all manufactured or value added items, so to speak. Um, both um, the labels and the barcodes are important investments and are required for ensuring that your product is attractive and marketable. Um, remember, most of all, your label is a marketing tool and should be identifiable by, um, by sight. Um, labels can dictate your success or your failure. Um, samples are requested for costing purposes, um, label review, barcode reading, because we try to test your barcodes, because like you gentlemen were saying, based on your, your what's the word you said, based on the quality, thank you, based on the quality of the labels, or you, you know, you get this little bleeding, or you get these shadows that the, the scanner doesn't pick up properly. So we advise people before they go into mass printing that they come to us and we try to, we provide them little support, we provide them those kind of, um, we test it um, to make sure it's readable. All the information that is provided by Bureau of Standards is actually on there. And then we, if, the, if there's a shadow, it won't scan. Or if the barcode is the wrong barcode as well, um, it doesn't scan, then we advise you which one to use, how to go about, if you maybe it's it's too small because Bureau of Standards might approve your label because it have all the requirements, but the barcode may be too small or the reading might be too small when you actually print it. Um, so we advise people um, to come to us before they go into mass printing because we don't want you to bring a product and then we cannot sell it um, because it's a loss to both parties. Yeah? Um, again, provide your product with a label and the barcode helps monitor your sales movement. Um, thank you for listening and have a good evening. Thank you so much to Mrs. Medine Pielwi for such an informative presentation. I'm sure when we now go to SMART, we will look to see if products actually adhere to the labeling requirements set forth by the Dominica Bureau of Standards. Thank you so much for staying with us live here on our webinar, Key Processes to Unlock Excellence in Manufacturing. We heard from Ms. Keisha Joseph, Technical Officer at Dominica Bureau of Standards. Standards. She spoke to the process flow for locally manufactured products. We also heard from Mr. Danny Joseph, Entrepreneurship Business and Innovation Officer at the, at the Ministry of Trade and Commerce. We also heard from Mr. Philip Roll, Coordinator Dominica Youth Business Trust, and he gave an overview of DYBT and the resources for startup. And we also had Mr. Linvor Ambo, Managing Director, Alozi Business Ventures, and he spoke to Manufacturing Excellence Unlock, Unlocked. And we also heard from Campbell's Business Systems. We had Mr. Da Mrs. Davina Boston George and Mr. Kester Labad. And we just heard from Esmat, who spoke to support 
and compliance. My name is Kamisha Dominique and I'm your moderator this evening and we're going to move to the exciting part of things right now and we're heading to quiz number three. So get ready to type into the Zoom chat as we load for you quiz number three. All right. Name at least three of the labeling requirements that SMAT requires when accepting products from local manufacturers or agro-processors. The first person to type the correct answer in the chat is the winner of this question. And don't forget our prizes we have this evening is a gift certificate from Body Bliss Spa. We also have a voucher from SMAT and a token from Dominica Bureau of Standards. So we'll wait for you to type the answers and we'll take a short break. When we come back, we move to, di to the director of Dominica Bureau of Standards who will give his closing remarks.
pedicures, manicures and acrylic services. WhatsApp or call us at 225-4909 to schedule an appointment. It will certainly be an experience you won't forget. Body Bliss Spa, where you're sure to have a blissful experience. We're located at Riverbank in Roseau and Little Trail in Peacock. Body Bliss Spa offers a wide variety of different massages, facials, waxes, body scrubs, mink lash extensions, pedicures, manicures and acrylic services. WhatsApp or call us at 225-4909 to schedule an appointment. It'll certainly be an experience you won't forget. Body Bliss Spa, where you're sure to have a blissful experience. We're located at Riverbank in Roseau and Little Trail in Peacock. Body Bliss Spa offers a wide variety of different massages. Hi, and welcome to the Dominica Bureau of Standards Inspection Unit. Did you know that there are currently eight compulsory national labeling standards being monitored in Dominica? As consumers, do you take the time to read your labels? Are you aware of the requirements which should be placed on these labels? Today, we are here to educate you on the requirements of the standards for pre-packaged goods and pre-packaged foods. General presentation of information. The label shall be steadfast. The statements on the label shall be prominent, clear, indelible, and readily legible by the consumer. The name and net contents of the food shall appear in a prominent position and in the same field of vision. Pre-packaged foods, product name. A pre-packaged food shall indicate the true nature of food and shall be specific and not generic. To avoid misleading or confusing the consumer, the true nature and physical condition of the food shall be declared, for example, dried, concentrated, reconstituted, or smoked list of ingredients except for single ingredient foods a list of ingredients shall be declared on the label the list of ingredients shall be headed or preceded by an appropriate title that consists of or includes the term ingredient all ingredients shall be listed in descending order of proportion net content shall be declared in the metric system liter gram immediately followed by the imperial system in brackets ounce pound gallon a food packed in a liquid medium shall carry a declaration in the metric system in the drained weight of the food example tuna in water name and address and country of origin name and address of the manufacturer packer or distributor shall be declared the country of origin of the food shall be declared example product of dominica the country in which the final processing is performed shall be considered to be the country of origin We are wrapping up our webinar here. We are on 
we are on our last few minutes here with you, our live webinar. Key processes to unlock excellence in manufacturing. So right now we're going to go straight into the answers to the questions for our quiz. So our first question was, what is the name of the unit at, at the Dominica Bureau of Standards responsible for verification of fuel pumps and weighing devices? And the answer to that question was the metrology is, that department is the metrology unit, and that was the answer to the question. And our winner was Miss Tisha Etienne. So congratulations, Miss Tisha Etienne. We will contact you from the Dominica Bureau of Standards and tell you how you can collect your prize. Next. Next slide, please. All right, question two, list two of the trainings offered by the Dominica Youth Business Trust, at least two. And the answer to that question was entrepreneurial development program, small business assistance facility, and social enterprise in incubator. So these were the answers to that question. And our winner, Mr. Sham Jacob, you are the winner. And we will tell you how you can get your prize. Next, our next question was, name at least three of the labeling requirements that SMAT requires when accepting products from local manufacturers and agro-processors. And the answer was, the, the winner was Lucia Blaise Jones. Thank you very much for participating in, in our webinar this evening and we are happy that that you joined us thank you so much at this time i will move straight across to the director dominica bureau of standards who is going to give his closing remarks thank you so much okay <coughs> good evening everybody i know it has been a long day and i know you're tired so i'll be very short and brief to the point um, so after several consultations with the private um, manufacturers and agro-processors, both here in Roseau and in Portsmouth, we listened to your concerns and your comments, and hence the reason why we are here today, to see how best we could answer some of those concerns. Um, we also thought it would be important to unleash or unlock the potential of our agro-processors and manufacturers um, here tonight. But I know that it's been a very long journey, but I would want everybody to join me in applauding the presenters on their presentations tonight. It was very informative, and I hope that it can push the needle to unlock some of those uh, potential agro-processors. We, we have been seeing some of your products when you come for label verification or even for laboratory services as well. So we know that the potential is here in Dominica. And we're hoping that by having some of the key agencies right here, um, it could answer some of the questions to the existing manufacturers, agro-processors, and even those that want to start a business. Um, so I would like to thank the presenters, um, Mr. Danny Joseph, Entrepreneurship Business and Innovation Officer representing the Ministry of Trade and Commerce, Mr. Philip Roll is the coordinator of the Dominica Youth Business Trust, representing the government supporting the agencies. Mr. Linvo Ambo, managing director of Alizo Business Ventures, representing the manufacturing sector. Ms. Davina Boston, supervisor of the customer service department, and Mr. Kester Labad, service supervisor and graphic designer of Campbell's Business Systems and Services, representing the designing and printing companies. And Ms. Marion Pierre-Louis, store manager of SMAT, representing the wholesale retail business or the supermarkets. Um, so closing off this entire consultation, the, uh, the webinar marks the end of the inspection unit labeling requirements awareness drive um, for prepackaged foods and prepackaged goods, which ran from the 3rd to the 27th of April. And some of those activities that we, we took were providing the relevant flyers um, with the requirements that were posted on, on social media platforms, including web pages and newspapers. 
We also provided information to the Did You Know segment on DBS Radio. And um, we developed and aired the videography, which was split today on the labeling requirements on media platforms, including the uh, Dominica Bureau of Standards Facebook page. And we also participated in the Youth Vibes Radio program uh, via DBS. Um, today, we have this closure with the webinar. And it will not be the end of the activities, because we do have plans for the future. Um, so we know that you may have uh, additional questions, and we would want you to, to send the questions to info at dominicastandards.org.org. We also want to thank the many listeners and the audience on Facebook and on Cross Radio Land. We want to thank very much our sponsors, Esmat and um, Body Bliss Spa. And not forgetting our moderator, we want to thank Ms. Kamisha Dominic for the job that she did, excellent job. And our crew here from DBS Radio, we want to give a big up thanks to you guys for assisting us and co-hosting this, this panel discussion. And not forgetting the entire staff of the inspection unit, Ms. Joseph and the team, hats off to you, job well done. Um, so what we plan on doing upcoming is that we would want to hear from you some more and we're hoping that if we could plan an expo at the end of the year to display some of the key stakeholders um, from the process flow, the process flow chart that was presented by Ms. Joseph, where participants um, will come from the designing and printing companies, the financial companies, the government supporting agencies and the supermarkets. Um, we're hoping that we can give each of the stakeholders an opportunity to display the work of the business entity at an information booth. Um, this event will be useful for networking. It will be a one-stop shop where manufacturers, agro-processors, potential manufacturers, and just the general public would have a, an opportunity to come and get information as it relates to the manufacturing process and the manufacturing chain. So we have this on cards for you that you can meet one-on-one -on -one with, with these stakeholders and ask all the relevant questions and seek all the information that's needed um, in starting up your venture, starting up your business. As for the Bureau, we have um, a lot of information um, and activities planned. And just stay close to our Facebook page and stay tuned for some of those activities that we will be hosting very soon. Um, so with this, I would like to end and I would like to thank everybody for just making this a reality. Thank you very much and have a good night.